right, the time has come. Good evening to everybody. I open the meeting up, and Mr. Fletcher, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Please stand, face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the mission statement, please. Mission statement. I'm required by our rules to read the mission statement. The Middletown Area Town Hall was formed to operate as a true town hall, with everyone participating and voting. However, county officials required us to elect a board to conform with other county advisory committees. Our bylaws specify that the board makes decisions based on the vote of everyone present. The board encourages all members to give their opinions and vote on every matter before the assembly. Mr. Chairman. And you're being recorded, so if you don't want something, then the camera's on, though. Yeah, we are being recorded, so if you don't want to be recorded, uh, let us know and we'll uh, ask LACO News to uh, shut it off. <coughs> okay? Okay. Um, has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Mm -hmm. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second? I'll second. Okay. <coughs> Everybody that approves? Aye. Second by aye. 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 Any objections? Abstention? No. Okay, so it's moved. Okay, uh, let's see, correspondence. We have a, a couple pieces of correspondence, one from Milltown Artisan uh, Market regarding uh, trying to open a uh, farmer's market art art center and so on. They are currently located at the, uh, the building across Forever Green across from the Cowpoke and uh, they want to know if uh, we would be interested in talking to them and, and they want to think about moving something into the park and we'll respond to them that that's not our call, that's the county's uh, purview to, to designate who can and who cannot be in the park. So if they want to use the park, they'll have to contact uh, the, the county rather than um, us. We have nothing to say about that. Okay? And that's our correspondence. Uh, committee reports. Any reports? Any committee reports? I, I have no. I don't have a committee. Right, so we'll move on. Okay. So um, major discussion here, and Mr. Waller Ewing with the, the County of Lake is here to bring us up to speed as to what can and can't be done with the Trailside Park to bring it back to life again. All right. Uh, so, again, Lars Ewing, uh, Public Services Director for Lake County. So, uh, public services entails more than just parks and recreation. That's what we're talking about here today. But we have, uh, we have solid waste. We have uh, uh, buildings and grounds, museums. Um, but parks and rec is, is what we're here about today, specifically Trailside Park. Um, the, the title there, you know, what is the plan for Trailside Park? I, I think it should have a question mark after that. that, that we, we don't have anything set in stone. You know, we're here to, uh, I'm here, uh, you know, to, to receive input more than give you input of what our specific plans are. Uh, by no means should I be up here telling you what your park is going to be. Um, so, you know, to set the stage for the history, my history with the county, well, my history with the county Parks is very short. I've been, uh, been with uh, public services for about a year and a half now. So uh, after the, the Valley Fire. Um, so I think that's you know, obviously a, a, a huge milestone there that, that I, I came in when that, uh, when that park was no longer Trailside Park as it was known before. Um, what we have done there, uh, just to, to bring everyone up to speed if, if they aren't aware, um, we, we, what were we going to do? You know, fire came in. We knew that those trees, uh, arbors came in. They, they you know, they, they assessed trees and listen. This, this is going to be uh, just a, a bunch of black sticks. So we, uh, we made the decision to, to remove the trees. Uh, the, there were, in essence, three phases of, of tree removal. There, the first phase uh, was done <clears throat> by uh, under contract with a company called Ashbrit. Uh, they did, a, you probably have seen them around here quite a bit, the focus there was to remove trees that were hazardous to existing trails. And, and that there is, is, the, uh, is, is really the focus. Uh, anything, any tree that could 
could potentially uh, fall on a on a trail where people might be traversing. That was the intent there. So they uh, fell those trees and removed them, and and, uh, and they were, weren't in the park. So that was great, but we still had the majority of the trees still standing. So phase two uh, was uh, was accomplished through a, a labor force program. It was um, um, uh, California Human Development. I believe, believe it was a Department of Labor grant that we effectively received free labor. There was no cost to the county, no, no cost to. Uh, um, uh, at least to, to local taxpayers there, um, and, and we had very minimal expenses, some expenses on equipment, but, um, but what that did is that cut the trees down that were, uh, that were standing. Um, we just, we wanted to, to jump in at the opportunity that we had to, to use that labor force, so we got them on the ground, phase three, which is now underway, and we're about two, two and a half months out from being, being done, and that's basically picking up the trees and, and chipping them and with, for reuse on the trails there. Uh, so you see a lot of wood out there in the park, a lot of people asking, hey, can I go in and take it? Well, it's not mine to, to get. It's, it's, uh, it's a county park, county facility. I can't just tell you yes, um, I need to tell you no. And we're, we're reusing that, um, that wood for trail surfacing. Um, so that, that brings us to, to hopefully a, a, a turning point. Now that we have that, uh, that, tra that uh, park, as cleared as we can with the resources that we have at, at our disposal, what do we do now? Um, it is not going to be the park that it was. That's, that's uh, you know, it's, um, ridiculous to even say that. It's, it's an obvious statement, but I, I think it's important to, to say that. Even if we let it, uh, let it grow naturally on its own, um, uh, the, the uh, foresters that I've talked to, Greg Juicy, a um, number of others, it won't be a, the, the pine forest that it was. Um, it will grow up to be a, a naturally an oak and manzanita dominated uh, a forest. And that doesn't happen overnight, as you well know. That, that is something that, that uh, you know, maybe my son who's sitting in the back, he had baseball practice here in Middletown, so we, we killed two birds with one stone. But uh, he might enjoy it, but, uh, but I, I probably won't, with the exception of some of the shrubs that, you know, that, that maybe grow up and, and I can see them, but not, not as trees. Um, so I think, I think we're here to, I, I'm here to, to listen to you. Um, uh, we didn't do this as a, as a public input advertised meeting because this is, this is you know, step uh, 0 0.5. Step one would be an actual public input meeting, which, which is, will be forthcoming. Um, and I'll, I'll ju jump into that here in a moment. But um, in the meantime, I have been contacted, we, public services, the county, has been contacted by a number of, uh, of individuals with interest in that park. You know, what, what are we going to do and can we do, you know, A, can we do B, can we do C? So, so a number of those, and I'll, I'll just float those out that have been uh, asked of us. Um, the, the arts in the park, that, that was uh, one topic. Uh, trails <coughs> is another. Uh, bocce ball has, has been brought up. Uh, equestrian, uh, we've been contacted about baseball fields. Uh, we've been contacted about playgrounds. So it obviously, and it's a big park. It is a you know, 107 plus acre park. Um, and and there, there's room, but there's also the, the underlying uh, assumption, I think, that, that it is a nature preserve. You know, that the, the park was purchased um, you know, under Prop 70, um, a grant that we received from the state under Prop 70. And, and that, was, that was a, it was a, a park and, and wildland and, and open space type of uh, funding. So we need to look back at the legislative intent. And I'm not here to tell you what that legislative intent was I, I, you know, I would, we need to do a little bit of research, but the information that we have from the state is that it it can be used for general park purposes. It, it's not um, the the intent of that uh, of the of Prop 70 was not explicitly for uh, only open space and and wildlife preserve and nature preserve. So uh, what I don't want to do is is be lim is limit ourselves. I also don't want to assume that that we can do that. We're we're working with the state. Uh, we received notice from them. Uh, about about a month ago uh, that, that they were looking back into the legislative intent and they, they were concerned about what, what can we do, um, recognizing that this is a unique circumstance. It's not as though the, this, the county bought this property um, and sat on it for, for 20 years uh, with the intent of, of having it as open space and, and now we want to have condos there. You know, no, we, we, we had a, a disaster come through that, that was uh, not of our own doing um, and it, it created a clean slate uh, on that park. So, uh, so what, what can we do given the, the conditions of that grant um, and what can we do given the, the, the new circumstances there? So, um, so I, you know, hopefully that sets the stage of, of where we are. Um, moving, moving ahead, so here's, like I said, this is step 0 0.5. Step one, 
um, is uh, on June 7th, we will be having a uh, uh, Parks Advisory Committee meeting, a county-wide Parks Advisory Committee. That is advisory to the Board of Supervisors. Um, there's one member from each of the, uh, the supervisorial districts um, for, for this area. It is uh, uh, Charles Hart. Um, he's on that. Uh, so there's uh, other members from around the county, Charlotte Griswold, Lyndon Ernst, uh, Michelle Beam, and Tom Nixon. So, so we, we will, con and it's a public open meeting. We will send out a, a public notice for that. Uh, the focus of that meeting really is going to be, we'll, we'll hit on countywide uh, parks issues. It was, this will be the first time that I've convened that, uh, that parks committee under my time as the, the public services director. But I'll be honest, the focus is going to be Trailside Park and um, the, the, the area of Middletown and Cobb, uh, the, you know, where, where we have the need for parks, um, where, where can we get the funding for it. You know, FEMA, as we all know, is, is not just handing out money. It's, they're, they're, we're not going to get a, a free park. Um, so so that's, that's step one. And then step two, uh, what I would expect is a, a public forum uh, similar to this, but with a focus of uh, you know, what are the needs? You know, what, what, you know, throwing out ideas. Uh, I'm just listening more than anything. So I've, I've said that I would listen more than anything, and I, I think I need to turn off my mouth and, and allow you to ask questions. Uh, let me try to answer any, and, and just you know, hear, hear input about what you might like to see there. So, yeah. If that's all right, I'm gonna, we'll, you go we'll for it. Uh, yeah, my name is Bill Thatcher. I live across the street from yeah. the east and from, from the south end, parched. I noticed that there's about 10 acres in there that hasn't had the trees cleared. Yeah. Is that part of the plan? That's you know, I appreciate you bringing that up. I I, I breeze past that. One, one of the uh, one of the concepts that we have, and this is uh, I think this needs to be fully vetted through. But in order to uh, save our options, uh, one one thought that I had uh, that I mean I had and we vetted it from within the county, and this was this is not we're not going full board with this. But the the area that is that is not been cut down, the intent there um, it is to what, what if we wanted to have some memorial of sorts? Let's see what, what this park would, you know, I, you've got a grove of trees that, that burn down, leave them standing for now. We can always go back in and cut them down, that's not a problem. Um, but have them remain in place. Let's see what Mother Nature would do on its own. So that, that was the intent with that grove. Uh, uh, then, uh, since then, and I, I did jump past what uh, another park that has occurred, obviously the tree replanting, huge effort, uh, huge community involvement. Um, uh, thank, I thank all the, the people that were involved with that, um, you know, the, the um, uh, LARCA, um, the uh, RCD, a lot, of, a lot of people, and I'm breezing past quite a few there, but they, they replanted thousands of, of trees there, ponderosa pines. We identified a specific area uh, that was vetted with, um, uh, with Greg Giusti and other foresters from um, Mendocino County RCD who helped uh, to identify an area that, that these trees would, would grow. So it's right in the middle. Um, uh, I, I, you know what, I don't have, have the maps here, but in general, it's about a 10 to 15 acre area where we did replanting. So the intent there was that was cleared, but we're going to replant ponderosa pines. So that's one, you know, it's kind of area two. One area, trees are standing, let it regrow as it, as it is without cutting them down. Uh, area two in the middle, cut them down uh, and, and do a replanting focused on ponderosa pine. Uh, the, the, another area would be area three, and that is, let's see what happens on its own. You know, so these are just some concepts that, that we have that um, I, I made the decision to not cut that area down uh, so that we could potentially have that, that area where, where we could look at it and see, all right, here, here's some trees, what, what does it look like? I, I got that idea from uh, when I was out at the Grand Canyon, to be honest. It, it drove, driving through an area that had uh, just outside of the Grand Canyon that had a fire, it was about 15 or 20 years ago. And, and they had a lot of interpretive signs out there to, to show areas that had been cleared, areas that hadn't, it was on a bigger scale. Um, but it, it was uh, it was very informative and, and I, I thought powerful and impactful for me. So I, I, just, I didn't I did not want to um, cut our feet off. I mean, quite literally, with those trees. I didn't want to cut them down and then have the idea. Oh, wow! I, I wish we would have kept some. Just you know, just for the uh, for a memorial of those. Um, so if if as a part of the public input, that is something that we want to say. No, I don't I don't want to see any black trees. You know, I, I understand. You know, that that's something that, that can come through that public input process. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say, I live across the street from Trailside Park on Dry Creek Cutoff Road, and there, I've seen people going in and taking wood from there, 
Uh, I don't know. I assume you guys are aware of that, but it happens quite a bit at night. Yeah, yeah, we're we're, we're aware, uh, and and it's a matter of enforcement. Uh, I mean, okay. You know, I we've yeah, got it seems contacted. Yeah, because like more of the accesses, the easy accesses, are getting blocked off. Yeah. The other thing is uh, the burning. How much longer is that going to be going? Because they started piling um, soil up on top and making burns okay. and stuff like that. But with the winds blowing the way they have for the last week. Yeah. It kind of sets you a little bit on edge. Sure, sure. And and I'll, I'll, just what else? Well, I right. guess the, uh, I'll answer that to say I, I don't know how much longer. I, I if, if I I'll make sure I get your your information. Okay. I'll get back to you. I will tell you that obviously we're past the the yeah. the, the, the burn ban or we're in the burn ban now. And and we I have been in contact with Doug Gearhart at Air Quality. Uh, we we any any burning that is happening out there is under. Uh, we've received a permit for that as an exemption. So it, yeah, it, it's not being done. Done, um, uh, you know the, the wild wild west. <coughs> well, like three 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 nights ago when the winds were really good through there, you could, really see, you could see it just glowing. Okay, well, like let, let's make things. make sure that I get your contact info so I can I can follow right, up with you. with what the, the actual plan is and then we will be stopping. Okay, thank you. Yes. Yeah, in the back. Hi. Um, so you're saying that that wood that was cut up was not available for the public to come in and hear? No, it's it's not. I, I recognizing that people have come in and and taken some. There have been some people who've contacted us that we recognizing that it was for a a public benefit. But if it was for hey, can I go in and take wood to you know for, for my personal use? Uh, you know the, the answer was no. Um, and and I, but I we did not post. Uh, you didn't see a CHP officer standing out of Highway 175 or a sheriff standing at the entrance of of Dry Creek Cutoff. I, I simply don't have the I, well. They're not under me but I also wasn't going to put my park staff there either so what we have done and you'll you see it out there is uh, uh, logs in, in front of areas that have been just you know blazed through um, but it's um, it's pretty open I asked Rob about that months ago and he texted me back saying yeah it's there for the public just I'll have a conversation with Rob yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll talk to him no I, I understand and, and and it's 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 out there and, and it's I think it's uh, um, because we did not actively enforce it and, and build a fence and, and say stay out, um, I, I think it, it was uh, it was a challenge. Um, but recognizing that uh, you know, the sheriff uh, and law enforcement has uh, a lot of other more pressing needs, it's not something that I was going to push with uh, with Sheriff Martin or, or anyone else. Lars, uh, thanks for coming. A couple of questions. Uh, I'm from Eco Arts of Lake County, so of course the art sculpture trail is where I'm coming from. And I have a bunch of pictures on my computer from <coughs> the walks that we've done there. And actually, to my knowledge, it's mostly, we lost a lot of oaks. And I'm wondering if the oaks will be reforested. Um, I think a lot of the manzanita might come back on its own, but in all of my pictures, it's mostly oaks and, and just a little bit of pine. So, so that's one part of my question. And then the second part of the question is that you mentioned Tuesday the 6th of June, is that correct? 7th of June. The okay, so Wednesday the 7th of June. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll pass through, uh, uh, through you, I suppose, information about that meeting. So does that mean that all the people from Middletown who want to have input on the Trailside Park need to go there? Or it's, can we th do this, is the, here? this is the starting point. The intent there is it, it's a Parks Advisory Committee uh, countywide. And, and, and what are we going to do there? I, what I would envision coming out of that meeting is let's let's work towards developing a master plan, whether it's a master plan specific to Trailside Park, a master plan specific to uh, uh, to, to, the, to the general larger region of Middletown, you know, to, to use that term, then uh, it, it, would, it would come up with that directive, in a sense, or at least recommendation that let's let's do the following. Uh, I would expect that it would be development of a master plan, which is not which is not an easy task. The, the county staff, um, in, in and of ourselves, we do not have the capacity, at, at least in, in my department, to to prepare a master plan. Most master plans are, are done by outside consultants. Uh, and and it does not come cheap, um, and I don't have deep pockets with with my parks uh, budget, so, so that, that becomes a challenge. So thank you. So where does the local community get a chance to really have input and really work on this? Number one and number two, given that we're having all these developments like Wenock, and we know that the casino has plans over time to expand, and we know that um, that there's Dollar General and all of that. When do we get a chance to actually look at? everything 
as a home to see how we're going to grow as a real, really as a community, especially in the face of recovery after this fire. That is to say, and also the pot, the pot zoning. It's like there's a place where all the different pieces that are happening need to come together, and where we, where we here in Middletown, especially since we're bruised and burned would really like to have significant input on what our community is going to look like now and in the future. Okay, well, I'll, that, that went from very detailed to very yeah. big picture, which, yeah. which yeah. I, I, but uh, that's what I appreciate, way way I, I appreciate that. And, and what, I'll, what I'll tell you is, is on the park specific, that you, you're, you know, June 7th, it, it'll be an open, uh, it's, it's a public meeting, anyone can attend. Uh, and, and the follow on, uh, the, the follow-on meetings, plural, uh, would would do the public input for parks in in the county. Now, the 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 other aspects, I'll I would defer to the gentleman with a lot more experience to my right, uh, and and he, he would be the one that can address that. I, I think if you uh, are, I would I would like to continue continue for a second. How just, much time do you want? Just for a second. Twenty minutes. Just for a second. Um, I still I still strongly believe that where we have parks have to do with what our and what they look like have to do with what other areas are designated for. Sure. Absolutely. And I also again want to want to ask like so when is this local community going to get a chance to really have input which is something that you and i actually discussed okay i, I mean if we're if it's specific to parks i guess that that's about the, no to the, the trail side park okay the trail side park that'll that will be addressed at the parks advisory committee on june 7th with a follow-on I, I you know i don't want to assume what that what their recommendation will be but I, I i think it's pretty easy to assume that we need to develop a plan and, and have that be uh, a, a master plan for the park Lars, uh, I, I, I apologize. I don't know. I believe it's in the morning, uh, 9, 10 a.m. I, I will I'll validate that. I, I cannot see this community and this town hall relinquishing its input to a parks commission, which means that we'll have to travel to Lakeport. No, it'll be here. It's here. Yeah. We don't want to do that. I, I can tell you, the people in this community are going to have the biggest say about that park because it's our park. Yeah, and, and if, if I can add to that, the, the Parks Advisory Committee is countywide. We, we have them meet, and what may come from that is probably something that already existed in the past, and that was a Middletown uh, Park Committee specific to this area. So, so that would then, you know, that, that would then work from that Parks Advisory Committee to, okay, who who would be on that on that working group? We have we have some ideas of, of the different people that have contacted us. Uh, forest preservation, wonderful. Equestrian, wonderful. Sports, because we need a place for our kids. Uh, all you have to do is go down Saturday morning at the high school and see they let us start at 6.30 in the morning in order to get all the teams in. So that's a big thing for us. Uh, our community has been holding events there every year. And then community development, uh, whether it be by way of a community center, event center, or whatever. But we, we want to be careful. We, we meaning uh, the people in Middletown that I've spoken to, want to be careful that we're in on the ground floor. Absolutely. We don't want to have to have a plan sent to us and then us pick it apart. Mm -hmm. We want to be part of that development and part of that input from the ground floor up no, no I, I, I can certainly appreciate that sure and that's, that's and that's why that that first okay. meeting it's it's not a buying closed doors and nobody's in, and nobody's in the guy from park uh, on the parks committee any uh, what's his name charles hart how many of you know charles hart okay one two never been to a math meeting we don't know him. Well, he's board appointed. I, you know, I, well, you know. That doesn't make it right. That no, doesn't I, mean I, I he knows. Say he wasn't just <laughs> <laughs> you know? I did just say that he wasn't just handpicked. You have me. to forgive me. I, I've been a victim of county bureaucracy before, so we want to make sure that we're in right at the yes. beginning. Yep. Thank you. Hey, let me hey, coming back to your, your question about the oaks. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, according to the, for, the, the the professional foresters that I talked to, that that uh, the, the oaks will thrive in that area. They it would, they may require some of them to. They're going to start out as bushes over the first ten years or so, and then we come back and, and identify the, the the main trunks that, that we need to keep. Uh, there you go. Uh, so manzanilla is yes, oaks yes. It's not something based on on their recommendations. It, it didn't require a specific replanting for oaks. It okay. would it would just thrive. Thank you for addressing that. You're welcome. I'd just like to 
center on the park and not anything else because <laughs> it does get too big. And you hit most of what I wanted to say, but you know, if your kids in this town, you know, my kids, you know, they spent 25 years here. And when they went to that park, they went there to walk the dog, walk in the country, and to look at the stars. We used to have a really good program where kids could learn about the stars, and we had a thing in the newspaper every time we'd come and do that. So any kind of observatory, any kind of thing that, that can be used day and night, it's positive, and it's great, okay? Because that's, that's really what it is. If we all get real grand about something short term for us, then we're going to cheat the next group that's come in for 25 years. Because we're all going to be gone, except Fletcher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to live forever. Right? Right. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, so, the June 7th meeting, it was the Middletown just has a quick get together and makes a park committee of our own. We will. Why don't we just do that? Yeah, and and, 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 yeah it doesn't have to go through that. I, I can go to them saying, oh, listen, Middletown that. already has this group, and, yeah. and this is what we recommend. I think that so we don't I, need I, their permission. Yeah, we we right. Right. No, that's that's yeah. already in the we plan. We that first yeah. Yeah. before yeah. that meeting. Absolutely. Uh, uh, regarding the remaining at-risk trees across from the park on Gregory Cutoff, mm -hmm. Are those on the schedule yet? To get them out of there? Oh, Andre, yes. They, uh, you're talking about the ones that, that not in the park necessarily, right, but the yeah, ones along, along, along Dry Creek. Yeah, yeah the, the ones that are marked LC, yes, that's, that's uh, been a, a disaster of its own. Um, and that's, mm -hmm. uh, I, I will be honest, uh, waiting on FEMA environmental approval. I, I, I predict, as challenging as that is for me to, to, to say, that's, that's what we, we are still waiting on. We have a contractor lined up. Uh, ready to, to do the removal of those trees, among many others. There's about a thousand trees countywide. Oh, that we still waiting need to for the magic letter. In the waiting for the magic letter. Yes. Any idea when? I mean, do you have any okay. idea? I, it, you, <laughs> every every month that I say that, it, it changes. But I, my my uh, crystal ball, I'm I'm going to say the middle of June that, that we will start seeing that. <coughs> Thank you. Yes, ma'am. When do we expect the uh, trails to be open for walking and horseback riding? Well, it, and until that crew is out, um, you know, for, which is about two and a half months, uh, I, I'm just not comfortable letting letting people in there. Uh, you know, so I, I think it would at least be until then. But that's something that uh, I, I think we should get input from the uh, what we'll call the Middletown Parks Working Group. Uh, I'd like to receive input if it's man, we're, we have people beating down the the door trying to get in, which you know we haven't received any any calls to that effect. But if if it's something where we need to um, open up a part of the park. Uh, you know, they're, they're working on, on, the, uh, on the north side, for example, let's open up the south side. Um, I, but I, I will be keeping the, the intent is to keep that area that we did not remove the trees, uh, keep public out of that. I mean, that's, that's just, those are widow makers, I, I think, in there, that, that would be a challenge. So, uh, and again, keeping that, the intent there was, there's a trail that goes all around, you, you start walking through, you see an area where it regrows on its own, and you can, can kind of walk through the progression of, of different ways that a, that a forest can regrow on a on a micro scale there in a small park relatively for a forest. A couple more questions and we're going to have to close it up. Go ahead in the middle. Yes. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, Robert Bataille is my name, the fearless leader of the Middletown Bocce League. Uh, so, of course, we do want to get uh, bocce courts into the park in some place, but they can be in a variety of locations. We want to be close to uh, parking and restrooms. And ideally, it'd be nice to have lights there. We might should think about getting some power into that park in some direction. Uh, typically, kind of these master plan things, we want to make sure at the June 7th meeting that, uh, you know, there's a series of meetings like you're talking about. Maybe you're just doing it locally and just take off running with it. Where, Every couple of weeks, we have like a little planning steering committee ideas about that's in the works. Yeah, and be over six, eight weeks, we can have a pretty good consensus of what uh, would be good use of that space. Okay, on the power that that is challenged. Oh, the last transformer is always down the road. So, call Karen. Okay, I, I'm not sure. Karen, where was Karen? She was, can, can we her first? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Hi. Sorry. Um, I'm the president for the Middletown Pod Little League, and we've been looking for years for somewhere to put um, some sort of stadiums up, but it also stretches more to other sports in our community with our youth league. But 
I would like to be included in anything that happens, whether you know we get a Middletown committee going for the park or um, just the county one in general, because Little League has um, special programs, grants, things to put up lights if we need to. They've got the money in the pockets, and especially with what happened with the fire, they've reached out to us a couple of times saying, hey, we're ready to help you and put things up if you guys have the space to do it. So, Cobb, is always in, Cobb is always included in yeah. Middletown. And Lacey, I, I, I appreciate you mentioning that because yeah. the, the you know we, we can master plan ourselves to death, um, uh, and then that goes on the shelf uh, because we don't have any funding to, to build what was planned. So, they have so yeah, and, and I, you know, I, I think it's safe to say that the county is is extremely strapped for cash when it comes yeah. to, to doing something like that. Um, uh, so I, you know, thinking yeah. outside of the box of, of the, the county pays for it is is appreciated, and I, I, I think I mean obviously my son's in the back there, and yeah, we just came from baseball, so I, I you know, I, I I know that there is a a, a shortage of fields. So. Yeah, absolutely, it's a huge thing for us in our in our community. I mean, and. Hidden Valley, we play there, but they can kick us out anytime they feel like it. So, thank you for the input. Include me. I've got ties and money. <laughs> Karen Jones, Middletown. Um, I was very fortunate uh, when they we I was on the original uh, board for the Trailside Park, and it was bought with the thought of it being an equestrian area as well as a preserve. Okay, and I, my kids play sports. I am friends with all these people. I'm friends with everybody in this room. But that being said, um, we just, we visited this, what, when we were gonna do the building for Hope City, guys. Um, and it was a very, very strong recommendation from the community that it stayed that way. And you need to remember that because I know that I didn't hear about this. I just happened to hear the, about this meeting at the very last minute. And I know a lot of people didn't know about it. And I'm kind of glad for you guys that they didn't because it wouldn't have been as, you know what I mean? Because they were very passionate, you know, and, and I appreciate that and I appreciate everybody being here. But we have to remember reason why, and yes, the trees did burn, but they will come back. Mm -hmm. And um, we need to really, I know we, everybody always wants more sports facilities. Everybody always wants, and I love bocce ball. I mean, I love the facility down in St. Helena. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, I don't know if that's the right place because... Um, I don't know, we, we need to, we have very few areas that we preserve. You know, um, Kim worked very hard to get the areas that he got, and his shoes are hard to fill. You're doing a wonderful job. Couldn't the um, equestrian coexist with all these other trees? Um, I, I think, I, no, and I think that's fine, but the whole point is, and that was the biggest thing, is they wanted it to be bird sanctuary, People came to look at the stars. People came, and it was a quiet place to be. Hey, bocce ball, there, there is no noise. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, But, I mean, I'm just throwing this out there. Just You guys need to think about this, why it was purchased. Sure. Yeah, and if I can offer this, so, just, just yeah. because I know there's other things on the yeah. side yeah. Sorry. what I'm presenting here. Um, what I'd like to offer is, is if, if we can, prior to that June 7th, which is right around the corner, but if, if we can establish you know, some, some agreement of who should be on this working group, if we want to call it that, to, to, to work out. Yeah. Issues like that, and then there's not going to be an easy answer. An I mean, it's, I it's, think, it's you know, it's, you know, there are just differing opinions. It was an of, of area plan. Sure, and sure. We have to, which I, everybody always goes back to. We need to remember our area plan. Right, and I and I mentioned the, the so. legislative intent of what the state had. There was also the legislative intent of, of the board. Because we would have moved so, our yeah. park there, the horse park there, a long time ago, but out of respect for what that was purchased for. We did it. So, so let it just again, just to move on, what, what we can do if we can, I, you know, I've got, I have everyone, everyone that spoke. I want to make sure that, that I have your contact information, um, and if, if maybe through through the, the leadership here, if you can get me contact information that anyone for anyone that has an interest in being on that trail side uh, steering committee working group, call it whatever you want. Um, I, I'd like to have your contact information so we can we can set something up to to work through that in a in a form that. that might be specifically for that. It'll take us another meeting because we didn't notice people that were going to form sure. a committee, but but we'll have some tonight that will want to participate okay. and Very give good. others an, an opportunity. Very good. Okay. Right. With okay. That, you have to cut it off. Yeah. With that we'll said, we'll move to our next one. Thank you, okay. Lars, for all Thank you, Lars. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. As like everything with this recovery, it's going to take a little time, and we all got to work through it. So. Uh,
Next up, our fearless community development leader will bring us up on a very unique opportunity for the county and everybody. Uh, Bob, it's all yours. Okay, so I'm talking about Dollar General tonight? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down, Bob. <laughs> uh, uh, cannabis? No, <laughs> that might be. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Go if we could have uh, the slides turned off yeah. here. As, as you all know, uh, an exciting new project has been announced for the uh, Middletown area, uh, the, the Gwinnock Valley project. Um, and I've had the pleasure of working with the developer, meeting with them. And what we've been focusing on is the procedure. How are we going to go forward in processing this? And what, what I want to do starting tonight is give you a, a, a project status report. And I've asked the committee, or the uh, town hall, that every month that I'll be here to give you a project status report. It's extremely important to me that this, is, this project, the approval of this project, is done as transparently as possible because it's, this project has a tremendous amount of potential for uh, Middletown area, the South County area, and in fact the entire county. And it's very important that we as the community work together as we go forward with this. Um, so real quickly, I want to talk about the process. How are we going to go through and the, the approval of this project? I want to talk, give it a slight overview. If you're here to get detailed information, I have no detailed information. There has been no applications filed. There has been no drawings filed. There's no maps filed. So I, I can talk to you about some concepts, some very, very, very high level, 100,000 foot level. But we'll talk a little bit about that. I want to emphasize the special area study that's in the Middletown area plan. Because from the county's point of view, where we're going to start our review from is this is the basis to start from. And I want to go through that just to remind everybody what are the key elements of the special area study. And then we'll talk about the path forward. All right. We really have two major players in the process of this. Lake County and the applicant. Now, Lake County, we're responsible for the, for the development permits. Some people call these entitlements. The general plan and the area plan will have to be amended for this. So your question back on, what, when are we going to look at everything together? This is when we're going to do it. This will be our opportunity to take a look at how this project will impact all the other aspects of the Middletown area. Uh, not just uh, in terms of what's going on in the valley, but what happens in terms of housing and transportation, the effect on the environment, the effect on schools, the effect on park demand. So all those things will be part of this review of the amendments. There will be rezoning of the property. There will be a master plan. Uh, right now you, you know it as a general plan of development. We're changing the zoning ordinance a little bit. We call it the master plan. So there will be a master plan developed for the entire project. And then there will be use permits. The project will be phased and there will be sp specific area plans. And those will go through a complete review process of, of doing this. We also have, parallel to this, is the environmental impact report. Because of the scale of this project, we're going straight to a full environmental impact report. And we, the county, is responsible for the preparation of that. The applicant is responsible for developing the master plan, their master plan of the area. Now you see master plan is mentioned twice. They'll develop their idea of the master plan, but we have to approve it. And then the specific plans, those specific area plans, the phasing plans, will be part of the use permits. So we have you know, distinct roles in this process. But what happens as we go forward, we have the environmental impact report. The environmental impact report will be done parallel as the applicant, the developer, develops their master plan. 
And this is, we're going to take a little bit unique process. Rather than having a master plan develop and then we evaluate it and have a master plan guide and dictate the environmental impact report, we're doing it parallel. We want the environmental impact report to influence the master plan. We want it to guide it. So as we get information about uh, critical habitats for species or uh, the hydrology of the area, uh, uh, groundwater, understanding the groundwater and how it impacts surrounding areas, that will guide their master plan process. <laughs> the master plan will give us input into this process to help us understand the volumes that we're talking about, where things might be located and things. But it's the environmental impact report will be the controlling document here. The master plan will also, that they develop, has to get the uh, development permits. Uh, and it will be a uh, full public hearing process. It will go before the planning commission. It will go before the board of supervisors. So there's a, a very transparent process for that. This, again, the specific plans of development for each of the phases of it will have to go through that development approval process. But in all cases, the environmental impact report is the basis for this. It will be the overall guiding document of how we approve this project. So you can see the interrelationship of things and how, we, how this will all be processed. A quick overview of the project. The starting point is the, the special area study that's in the Middletown Area Plan. That's where we, the staff, is starting from. In my conversations with the applicant, it's clear they understand that the importance of that plan. And a lot of the general broad 100,000 foot level things that have been discussed complement that specific area plan. We're talking about the Guanaco land tree area, approximately 14,000 acres. And this is a very large scale project. To give you some comparison, Walt Disney World in Florida is 35 square miles. This is 25 square miles. So that's the scale that we're talking about. It's a very unique opportunity to work with such a large scale project where you can really take a look at all the aspects of the environment, look at areas that need to be protected, areas where development should be encouraged, how the transportation networks works in that area, how we deal with uh, fires. You know, we know this area will burn. Historically, it has burned. How do we master plan that from a, a resilience point of view? So it really gives us a great opportunity not to have it come in with little, little piecemeal and little pieces, but to come up with a master plan for the entire area. The concept. Now, we have entered into an agreement with uh, the developer uh, that agreement is an at-cost agreement where they will pay for the cost to prepare the environmental impact report as well as pay for the staff time working on this project. Within that agreement, this is the language that we have, what the, the concept of the project is currently. I, I want to emphasize a couple of words here. High-end, low-density, boutique-style hotels, spas, sporting facilities, a town center, cultural facilities, and a residential component. And remember those terms because as we go through the uh, special study, you're going to see these same terms used. And so you see that there already there's some alignment coming together on, on this project. So the special area study. First, to expand agricultural operations. So that's an important element as we look at this project as we go forward. How does it relate to preserving the agricultural activities of the area? How does it make our agriculture more sustainable? How do we tie that into tourism? And what are the, the spin-offs that we can get from uh, the uh, tourism? Continue the ranch land operations. And again, that's really important to preserve the character of the county and using those ranch lands as as setting that character. Long-term protection of natural resource values. The property is full of streams, rivers, wetlands, uh, 
just incredibly beautiful <coughs> habitat. And so they, it's important as we go forward in this process to preserve those. The wine uh, production operations. As you know, there's the Langtree Vineyard out there is a very large operation. It's been there for quite some time. It, uh, it is expanding and it will be an important element as we go forward and looking at this. The golf course and other outdoor recreation. Now there is an existing golf course there. It does need some rehabilitation and things, but that is, you know, maintaining that will be an important part of it. But other outdoor recreation opportunities. We don't want to be just known as a, a golf course community. We want to be a, a, a tourism destination where people can do a lot of different outdoor recreation. So as we review this project, we want to make sure we achieve that. We want to expand visitors' accommodations at the site. And we are uh, migrating toward a resort commercial uses. So resorts are very, very important as, as we go forward with this. Again, it, it's um, expanding that tourism economic base of the county. Residential uses that will uh, support the uh, full range of proposed uses. So I, my interpretation of this is as a concept where people can live where they work or very close to where they work. So people don't have to drive all over the county to go to work. <laughs> also from an energy point of view, from a sustainability, from a carbon footprint, that is all a very positive thing. So we're looking at you know, what residential uses are being proposed and how do they integrate into the overall project. We want to continue the uh, operation of the uh, guest comp, um, accommodations and concert with the golf course operations and agricultural uses. One of the things that has come up in the cannabis discussion is the conflict between growing cannabis near residential areas. And people say, well, no, you shouldn't have agricultural near residential areas. But what the area, the special area plan talks about is integrating those. That there is a relationship, there is something that we can work on to develop it together. And so that's an important concept we want to take a look at. Boutique resorts. You know, we don't necessarily want a chain, you know, the Hilton come in. We want something that is unique that sets us apart from the rest of the world. Again, high-end resorts. If you remember the concept that we talked about when that, under that at cost agreement, the high-end resorts was something that was uh, mentioned. Bed and breakfast ends. And you'll notice that we're starting to have a variety of different types. So we don't want just one type of resort, but we want a mixture of resorts. And that really helps our economic base by having a diversity, you can have a, a much stronger economy. Active adult resort, again, another type of resort. Uh, the accessory and suburban residential uses need to be, uh, to support the residential development may be considered consistent with the policies. Again, where employees can live near or where they work, that there's that relationship. We want walkable communities. We don't want Huge subdivisions where everybody has to drive to get anywhere. We want to make them compact, walkable communities. Community identity. That's one of the things I learned very fast when I came here. That each community within Lake County has its own unique characteristics. Milltown is unique from Cobb, from Lower Lake, from Upper Lake, from Nice. Everybody, each of the different communities had that character. So as this area develops, it needs to set its own character. But one of the things I keep emphasizing, it has to be within the context of Lake County. Don't come in with Epcot. Don't come in with an ultra-modern type of thing. Because that's not Lake County. We want something that fits into the context of the county. We want to preserve open space and agricultural land. Again, it goes back to the walkable community. We want compact development. We don't want things spread out over the large area. We want to provide a range of housing opportunities. Yeah, we want a housing that is affordable for workers to work at, live at. But there's nothing wrong with a multi-million dollar mansions to attract that end of the uh, housing. But it's important to provide that diversity. Uh, compact building design, again, you know, keep it compact. 
uh, on-site resort and agricultural uses. A cluster new residential development to preserve the agricultural operations, support sustainable growth, reduce impact on the hillsides, the natural resources, traffic, air quality, and retain the natural landscape. Again, that theme of compact development is something that the special area plan just keeps bringing up over and over again. Appropriate residential development shall be based on and consistent with the uh, general plan and policies as part of the plan development process. And that's the zoning aspect that we'll get into. Promote agricultural winery and ranch land uses along with golfing, attractive uh, wine industry customers and visitors alike. Again, we want a, a facility out there that brings in tourists and, and expand our, our base on tourism. Provide opportunities for hunting and fishing on the ranch lands. Again, the diversity of outdoor recreation activities is something we want to make sure that this plan has, uh, project has. Uh, use of trails uh, for hiking, viewing, uh, equestrian opportunities. So again, it's compact development, outdoor recreation, where people can then experience the, the natural uh, landscape. We want to create uh, trail linkages for uses on the property, for winery and, and guest resorts and things like that. So as the, we, when we look at the project and how it's laid out, how do they link it together with trails? Uh, implement special recreational events, include winemaking, horseback riding, birding, hunting, uh, include a golf course and clubhouse for community events. Again, there's that emphasis on the recreational aspect. Okay. So what's our path forward? How are we going to proceed? First is the EIR. Uh, the Board of Supervisors last week uh, uh, authorized me to uh, put out an RFP to hire a consultant to do the our, uh, EIR. The EIR is an environmental impact report. The EIR will take about 18 months to complete. This is not something that's done overnight. There's a lot of studies that will need to be done. On 14,000 acres, it's a lot of work that is involved there. We'll be uh, going after a, um, consultants that have experience doing large-scale EIRs. Uh, large-scale resort type projects that have experience in the Northern California area preferably they have uh, experience in uh, dealing with a multitude of a variety of uh, issues that are need to be addressed so hire a consultant one of the after the consultant collects a lot of information one of the most important steps will be a scoping meeting that will help scope out the full EIR uh, work and what has to be done. That will be a public meeting. You will be invited to attend. This will be an opportunity for everybody, you, the applicant, the county, state agencies, federal agencies, to guide what should be in the EIR. And that's going to be a very important meeting. And we'll do a lot of studies and evaluation and prepare the EIR. The applicant is, is work, will be working on their planning as we do the EIR and, and um, <coughs> parallel. So the master plan and the specific area plans. Will be, first will be a master plan for the entire project. Again, that will go through our normal county review. Uh, goes to the planning commission as well as the board of supervisors. Um, I suspect we'll probably hold workshops because it will be a, a large document, a large thing to do. Uh, I suspect we'll have one or two uh, specific area plans right away because it's going to be very important for the applicant to go forward with the project uh, and start construction after we've spent 18 months or so going through this, this process. And then we're we'll also working on their architectural plans. And that will be an important element of what we're looking at to see how it fits into the context of Lake County. So at that point, we're dealing with the entitlements, the uh, development permits, there'll be the general plan, area plan amendments, rezoning, master plan, and, and the use permits. Uh, again, these will be done. Uh, we'll, we'll start the entitlement review process, I don't know, maybe in six months or so. So we'll be doing the EIR, they'll be doing their master planning, they'll be, the applications will be coming. So at some point, these should all come together 
so that we have a final approval. So I'm requesting an opportunity to meet with you on a monthly basis to give you a status report. I will be honest with you, some months might be there's no new stats. There's a, they're all out in the field studying, and we really don't have anything to update. Or, okay, here are, here's where we are in the process. Here's the information that's come in. Here's the next step. Now we're going to go forward. But it's also, I want to meet with you monthly to answer questions. The last thing I want is the room to be able to go crazy with all sorts of theories of what's going on out there. And so it's really important for me to make sure that I can, you know, if you have questions, I can answer them. If I don't have an answer, I can explain, you know, the best of my knowledge what's going on. We're also looking at the county of creating a website for this project. So the information will have uh, applications that come in and stuff. You'll be able to go to our website, link on those, and get that information. That is currently under development. We um, haven't gotten that complete yet, but as soon as it does, and hopefully by the next uh, monthly meeting, I can give you a website address so that you can get this kind of information. The key for me, though, is I want full transparency. I want you to know what we're what we're doing. So, very quickly, any questions? Right, your hand went up first. Yeah, Ursula Simon. I'm the chairman and executive development committee for my tribe out there. Yeah. What I did notice is that you have cultural in there once. I saw you say high end, high end. We are absolutely not going to tell you how it's going to be. I want to make that real clear. This is this is the community. What I've shown you is what the community has said a couple years ago. Now we have an opportunity. That it's it's one thing to talk in theory and what well, we'd like this this and this, but now we are actually really making decisions where concrete's going to be poured, and it, it's a time for us to reassess uh, what's going on. You know the EIR process. I know the tribes very involved with that. Cultural resources is a key part of that. So a consultation with the tribe and all the tribes will be a very important aspect of this process. Yeah, but it's not mentioned in there. That well, that's uh, because that's the way the area plan was written. Uh, it will, you, there will be so much consultation with the tribes, it, uh, you'll get tired of seeing us. I mean, that, that's not gonna be an issue. Bobby. Uh, could you explain, what, when you were talking about we this and we that, you're talking about we being the community and everybody, not just the county and the people that make decisions at the county level. I, I hope, that, because I, uh, how many times have I been here now? Fifth or sixth time? I hope you know that the way I like to do community development planning is to work with the public, work with the community. That's really critical. As soon as this project, as soon as they announced that they were going to have the event on April 29th, I said, I have got to get to the community as soon as I can so I can explain the process, how we're going to work with this. So when I say we, I do mean the collective we. And it's, it, and it's very important. When I talked about the scoping meeting, that is all of us working together on the scoping meeting. So. Okay. Relevant to that, would that be here, the scoping meeting? Uh, it, I will have to make that decision as we get more information. It may have to be over in the gym. It may have Somewhere to be in Middletown. In Middletown. Middletown. Uh, or, uh, well, Lower Lake, we have the, the museum, which is, there's an advantage from me in terms of the museum because I doesn't, they don't charge me for it. Uh, so, but yeah, in, as close to Middletown, if not in Middletown as I can. But this, the, the problem, concern about it is the number of people that may show up. And so, how we deal with that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. So you said about 18 months for the EIR report, so right. it's going to be at least 18 months before anything solid is built. At least 18 months. Right? At least 18 months before. Now there may be some uh, construction going on out there because it is an operating ranch. And as long as they are doing 
uh, work as, as part of the ranch act, to, act and, and the winery, that's allowed. And we'll, but we we've already talked to them about the what the limits are. You cannot modify something or build something that will be uh, that's intended specifically for the future. If you're modifying something that may have a use in the future, but it's for <laughs> your operations now, that's allowed. So there's a very fine line that will be evaluating everything that they do out there to make sure it's done. Okay. Yes, sir, back there. Um, I'm, uh, what really caught my attention was the EIR. Who's paying for that? I'll, I'll follow up because I hear, I don't get some of the circles I pay for for years that I've requested. And, uh, and basic services, I'll show you how to manage this so far and that sort of thing. So my concern is who's going to pay for this? I don't want my tax dollars to pay. The, 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 the at cost agreement I talked about, the applicant is paying for the full cost of the EIR. Uh, and just to give you the, some of the details on that, as well as staff time, uh, uh, there will be two project, two staff people hired to work on this project, and their time will be charged to the applicant. So it's a, uh, they pay for the full cost. To give you some idea of what we're talking about, at this stage, what we call the uh, pre-application stage, they, uh, there's a check in the mail for $65,000 as a deposit to cover our costs. Once that gets down to 40% of that, they have to re, re, reimburse it. Once there's an application made, it's a $100,000 deposit. And once we sign a contract with the EIR consultant, it's $250,000 deposit. So uh, we, uh, you know, we, I and the general counsel of the county will work very carefully on this agreement to make sure all our costs are covered. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, regarding the EIR, one thing I would agree, you know, tax dollars is not something that we necessarily want to put forward to it. I also see the disadvantage of having a company pay for an EIR when it is in their interest to have that EIR, EIR turn out in their favor. That's, that's not, okay. And, and, and I want to, that's a very. It is a private firm, but having sat on the side, purely on the sidelines of a smaller project where an EIR was required and a company it was a winery up in Sonoma County, paid for the EIR to happen, totally turned out 100% in the favor of the winery, not in the favor of the people that live in the community around that winery. Okay, I want to, this is a complaint I've heard repeatedly. There was a recent project in the county that there, there were similar comments. We've, we've made it extremely clear. We are the ones selecting the consultant. We are the ones putting together the RFP. We are the ones managing the consultant. Yes, the applicant will be providing input into the process. We will be telling them what we're finding and things. But the county staff, I, as well as the Board of Supervisors, have final say and final control over this. Uh, the, it's completely uh, arm's length transaction. Uh, basically, you know, they're paying, but we're controlling. Okay. Yes, ma'am, sir. Okay, can you disclose uh, the total capital investment? Like fifty million or more? Yeah. My understanding is a dollar three eighty. A dollar three eighty. I I have no idea. I mean, at, at that, you know, it doesn't matter. No, I have no idea. Yes, ma'am. Who exactly is the app? Okay, the app. I, I'm sorry. I, I should have said. Yeah, I should have said that. It's Lotus Land Investment Holdings. Lotus Land Investment Holdings Inc. Out of San Francisco. I, it is my understanding that they have, but I'm not, I, I believe they have, I, I'm not 100% sure on that. Yes, sir. Uh, I may be the only one that needs to be brought up to speed on this, but in this community, is this a members only community? When we talk about the fishing and the hunting and all the activities outdoors, is it a community base or is it just a membership only? Again, we have received no application, we have received no detailed information. Now, as we review it, the, those, the things I went through is what the area, our area plan says it should be in, uh, uh, included. Uh, as we go through this process, those are the types of things that will be discussed and fleshed out. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when are you going to add that staff? And, and only two people do it, will they be planners, or what will be their title? Okay, uh, uh, the board has authorized two positions, a senior planner and associate planner. Um, I am recruiting a, the senior planner position right now. In fact, the closing on the applications was uh, on the 5th. 
I have re received a, a list of four applicants. One of them looks possibly promising. Uh, the senior planner will be taking care of the CEQA aspect of it. Uh, the second position is associate planner, which will be dealing with the entitlements. Um, on another <coughs> recruitment, I have identified a person and she, has, she and I have had conversations uh, as soon as I can get one document from the uh, Human Resources Director, a procedural thing, uh, I will officially make her an offer. The advantage of this uh, individual, she has worked for the county in the past, she knows our code, so there's no learning curve there. Uh, and the first task she'll have is to pull up all the files for Langtree, Gwinnock area and get a full understanding of what the uh, things are. Well, you able to pay them a fair wage? Because what happens all the time, you guys get somebody graded in every department, they get trained here and they go elsewhere because of the dollars. So is that going to be a problem? <laughs> I don't know. Since this has been recorded, I don't know if I... I'll, I, I'll say, yes, we'll be able to recruit and retain the right staff. There was a page with a map, and it was a little bit hard to read. And I'm wondering if you could go back to that page and explain to us what, what we were looking at exactly. Okay. Uh, th this is a map out of the uh, uh, area plan. Bear with me a second. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, this is out of the uh, Middletown area plan. It's for the uh, Langtree Gwinnock Valley um, Special Area stu Study. And so it, this is the, the property of uh, the gray area. This is the um, uh, Lower Lake, not Lower Lake, um, Hidden, Hidden Valley um, Community uh, Growth Boundaries. Uh, now, Coyote Valley. Coyote Valley, thank you. Pardon me? The Middletown? Is the grid? Oh, no, the grid yeah. at the bottom. Yeah, th this is the Napa County line. This is Butts Canyon Road. Uh, Langtree, the vineyard is right here. Yeah, Middletown's out here. Yeah. Okay. Now, this this map, uh, I am waiting on a map from the app uh, from uh, Lotus Land to give me the exact parcels, but generally this is uh, the area we're talking about. Yes, so how many acres are on the Napa County side? I I don't recall. I think it's somewhere in the six to eight thousand range, but that is, that, is that there is no project there. The, okay. The, the project. So there's not going to be um, a joint um, communication with Lake County and Napa County for development. Oh, no. <laughs> right. There is no there, there is no project in Napa. Now there will be coordination with Napa because of the of the boundary. Uh, we can't do an EIR and ignore that. They, they will be part of the evaluation. Yes, sir. Um, my name is Charles Morris. I studied Native American studies in, uh, at Sonoma State University, yeah. and I'm really kind of concerned about this because the Slotus lands, they do seem to be Buddhist related and, and all this such, and is it going to respect really what is sacred land for our little group of Indians? You know, they were ran off that land, at, you know, basically homeless and, and pushed out this way. So, I mean, are we going to bring in a bunch of folks who are going to shut down, sort of like Harvins does, and not let the people who actually really were there go back? And if you can't tell us it's going to be open to the public and it's, and it's not going to respect our little piece of culture, our little piece of history, what are we getting into here? I'm just curious. Okay, in the at cost agreement, where we describe the concept, the key is here is cultural facilities, and uh, there uh, at the uh, April 29th there was a, a a video showing different things. It included a museum. I the, again the hundred thousand foot level. The conversations I've had with Lotus Land is that they're extremely respectful of culture. Uh, it is not only. Uh, American, Native American culture, with Chinese culture, and other cultures. Uh, the uh, hotel, uh, the resort concept they're working on is uh, Amund uh, yeah. Resorts. Yeah. And that is a, a global 
resorts. And they are used to working in different cultures and they are respectful. I have, there's been anything, all the research I've done, all the conversations I've had with them, there is absolutely no indication that they're gonna be disrespectful. Uh, but not only of the Native American culture, but also the context of Lake County. Uh, every conversation I've had is they, they love this piece of property because of the natural beauty and they do not want to do anything to destroy the natural beauty. Now, time will tell. We've got to go through the process. But so far, no red flags have jumped up in, in my mind. Yes, ma'am. Well, it looks to me like you're building a town, or at least towns out here. I mean, out there. I mean, this is a, where is it, where is it, how is it going to get there? I mean, you know, we basically have an issue of roads in the, in the county in terms of, we have 29, it goes over the, you know, the, the uh, edge there, having to have to go out maybe to uh, Hope Valley or whatever, but it just seems like, you know, the roads are not really set up to take in this huge influx of, of people, you know, uh, when you have, to, you know, town centers, you have multiple towns, I mean, God, this is like a massive thing. How are they going to get there? Great question. And we'll find out. Well, uh, part, of the EIR, find out. part of the EIR will be a transportation study. It will be a, a very detailed study of, of the roads, the whole network, not just on their property, but the surrounding area. I mean, it, it will go beyond uh, 29 and 53 and 175. Are you going to put a freeway in? We, uh, I mean, we, um, until we but, see the pro I mean. When we talk 14,000 acres, and when you go through that long list, you might think, heck, the whole thing is going to be developed. It's going to be wall-to-wall -wall people. Well, but I'm we don't know that. that, but he, the way the list well, of things you have to put on there sounds like it's going to take a, a lot of people. Yeah. Um, listen, uh, we had some discussion about this meeting and whether we were too early, because inevitably questions are asked, assumptions are made, before they should be. Uh, we don't even have an application. So don't worry about the roads. Don't worry about uh, traffic. Don't worry about at this point. Wait till it, we get an application. And then all of that, we've got 18 months of EIR work to do. So you're getting ahead of the, the, the curve, I'm afraid. So. Well, yes, no, sir. I know you would think so. Yes, sir. <laughs> Have you heard any numbers about a proposed budget or how much money they, they hope to spend? $80 million, $300 million, any number at all? There has been no, no discussion at, it, at all. At what point does that enter into conversation? Uh, it, when we get the application, there, there, a lot of information is required in that as we go through the EIR. There's a lot of information required. Uh, I hope in the next three to four months, we'll have a, a more detailed, say, schedule of events, when things will occur, and maybe we'll start getting some information when we can expect that kind of information. But right now, we just don't have that. Another couple questions. Sure. Yes, sir. So just to follow up, so I would encourage anyone who's curious about the project, it's Amon Resorts, A-M-E-N Resorts. He's built them globally. He's got two here in the United States. One's in Bryan Head, Utah, and one's in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. They're absolutely stunning, gorgeous, and mm -hmm. blended into the surrounding areas. They're not going to come out and build a 15-story Foxwoods resort like they did in Connecticut. So that, that's not who they are. Um, I would say also, and I spent quite a bit of time speaking one-on-one -on -one with the developer uh, at the event. The transparency isn't just coming from him. They, have, they want nothing but 100% transparency on their end at the same time. They are coming, Who the developers. Are you? Who are you and what's your function? What's My name's David, I'm the branch manager of Tri County's Bank here in town. For who? Tri County's he's Bank. The, the, he's, he's the banker. Mm -hmm. Not, not for the project in any way, shape, or form. Well, he's not this one. But, but, but you know, the, the transparency that emanated from that group, <laughs> that, that emanated from that group is they, they don't want to do anything without our input. They want the community to be involved, not because the county's telling them they, them. That's where they want to come from. They, they want. They want to hear from us. One more question. <laughs> okay. One more question. You, you got it. Yes, 
there any talk of an airport? Because I heard that there was some uh, discussions going on about putting an airport in Bud's hand. Is that is there any reality? Again, we have no application. I, we, it's, we don't know. I mean, we'll wait and see. Those are the types of things. Here, right here, that's, that's the exact thing that we're trying to prevent, is all this rumor mm -hmm. garbage that goes around. The, the, right now, having met the people, they are dedicated to the community. They've already reached into their pocket and helped out the community. Million dollar check here a couple of Saturdays ago to the City of Hope to help rebuild. These people are dedicated and they, they're dedicated to the community and to preserving it as it is now to some degree. There will be changes. We already have changes because of the fire. Again, there's a process. The, the county wants everybody, because it's a major project, to be as best informed and no rumors and gossip and all that. They're wanting to be here for the next two or three years every month to report on it. <laughs> <laughs> Him and I may be gone by then, but anyway, so anyhow, that's, I'm, we're going to call Pretty but quick. I think it's good to look up. Um, 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 Randy, um, Randy will, will be up next, so if you have questions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went two weeks ago down to Gwenock, and I'll tell you, Gwenock has been a wonderful place, but it's a very private little place. And I feel like out of all the owners that we've had in a very long time, these people actually want to be a part of our community. Good. And I really, if you were there and you talked to any of them personally, or any of the people, the vineyard managers, any of them, they want to do things in our community. And I think instead of being skeptical, which I feel like a lot of people in this room are being, I think we need to open our minds a little bit and our hearts a little bit and listen a little bit and wait till that application comes through and then ask the hard questions. It's, 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 it's a world-class world operation we're dealing with. This group is world-class. Randy, the representative of Property. I don't know if I have much to say. <laughs> Jump in there. <laughs> so uh, my name's Randy Sternberg, and I'm the Gwinnock Ranch manager, and I have uh, lived on Gwinnock Ranch since uh, 1981. So 35 years, raised my kids there. Um, so we, I have been asked by Fletcher and Claude to come once a month and kind of give you a, an update on what we're physically doing. And of course, that's not going to amount to much until we get going and get the application to Bob. Bob can kind of handle the details. Um, so this month, um, we had our two events, um, 28th and the 29th. The 28th was a supper that we had at the Langtree House. Um, the people that came to that were the county uh, supervisors and the heads of all the departments and some of the city department heads. And that went over very well. Everybody had uh, enjoyed the visit with the crew. Um, and then the following day was Saturday and we had the open house um, at the winery and they think between uh, 150 and 200 people came to that so that was good we we just advertised it a little bit in the record beat and uh, my daughter put it in the Facebook and so anyway out of that we got 200 people so it was kind of it was really nice and we really wanted to thank everybody for coming to that and being so supportive so I think uh, you know, I feel really good about this project. I've been there for a long time. There's been a lot of projects come across the tables of the owners, and it always was thousands of houses and thousands of people, and this, this project is really um, just a low footprint, low density, like Bob's been saying. It's, it's really going to be good. So I'm excited about it. Randy? Yes. Introduce, uh... I will. Um, we have three people from our team here tonight. Alex Hsu, Gary Hastings, and Abe. They're sitting in the back. So hopefully we can bring more of our team here uh, once a month. Um, next month, I'm going to be on vacation. So um, I'll call Bob and tell him what we do. <laughs> but anyway, you've heard the process. 18-month EIR. You know, there's not going to be a lot going on until then. But Langtree will remain open. Yeah, yeah. Langtree and after the winery is still exactly the way it was. The vineyard operation is still exactly the way it was, and that's like Bob talked earlier. Is you know that's part of the plan. The ag is as much part of it as everything else. 
Okay. Another question. Yeah, I, I just, I just want to um, support Crystalline and anyone else. You know, first of all, I'm not skeptical necessarily about the project, but I, but I did just go through a fire, mm -hmm. and the roads were were impacted, mm -hmm. and it was a slow way out. And so I think that I think that it, it behooves us to call one another by saying how we might address this, because mm -hmm. I think that it's something that, at a very visceral level, is very real. You know, if you put more people in here with the amount of roads that we have, we already should have more ways out than we have. Can I hear that? Go, Clyde. Sure. I've attended a couple of application meetings, and CAL FIRE is involved in each one. And they make it very clear. Access in and out is going to be <coughs> top priority. They do not want to be rushing in to a bunch of people coming out. They've got to be your Roads, certain roads will have to be widened if that's required. But they will have a say in that as far as protection, like Bob said. We've been through the fires. We don't want it again. We want to protect everything. So I can say that the CAL FIRE has a very big stake in that process. Well, thank you for saying that because that, that helps make people feel better, I think. And Caltrans is going to be a pretty Thank you. Yes. I just wanted to know, once this process gets going, I, I think it's a pretty cool project. I'm kind of, I'm really excited about it, actually. Um, I'm hoping that they still route the traffic through Middletown so when we have our little shops, they stop here too. But my, um, my question is, once it starts to get going, what is your projection when it's going to be finished, if everything goes as planned? What you mean, built out? Yeah. Until we get the application, until they show us our phasing? We have we no have, idea. We have. Margaret, These are all the, all the questions you're asking are excellent questions. You're just a, you're a couple months early. Okay. <laughs> hey, no further All right. Close it. Thank you, everybody. Thank our guests for their part in that. We, we, look forward, we look forward to seeing you for the next couple of years. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Right. People, I think there's public comment coming yeah, up. Yeah, so stay. that's the next item. Public comment. It's open, and the fact that we get it here, we can discuss anything that's already been discussed. So. Yeah, three minutes. Three minutes. So go for it, Marlene. Um, I'd um, like to remind everyone that we are going to start our movies in the park again this summer. Yay! Yay! Our first movie is going to be June 10th. And we are going to be watching monster trucks. So come on down and watch them. <laughs> I'd like to, Sheriff Martin asked me to make a meet, uh, make an announcement here. National Night Out, August, I want to say first. We'll go get the final date. They're looking to have the National Night Out out here in the park. Can't hear you. Sorry. They're looking to have the National Night Out here at the park. Um, so he will be, they're looking for volunteers, donations, all that, to have a nice evening for kids and the family to come out and enjoy National Night Out, which I believe I've got written down August 1st. Uh, it may be August 2nd, i got to look at it. But anyhow, um, if, if you have something you would like to do or participate in it, please let me know and I'll make sure uh, Sheriff Martin knows and gets in touch with you. Go for it, please. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a cleanup day in Middletown, and uh, I want to thank Mike Tabaki for organizing the highways and all that. And Marty Dalder was one of the people, uh, my bride was down there, and I was down there, and I can tell you firsthand uh, that uh, for a 78-year-old man to get down on his hands and knees and grub weeds is not bad until you have to stand up. <laughs> but we had, a, we had a good time. We felt good about it. And the next time we have a Middletown cleanup day, you should all take advantage of the opportunity to serve your community and help make it pretty. We want it to be pretty, but it's not going to be pretty by itself. We have to help it. So next time we have a cleanup day, sign up, come down. It took a couple hours and uh, I had a truck and a trailer and it dumped all the trash in it and it went well. But take the opportunity to serve your community in that way because you'll feel better about downtown if it's nice and clean. Thank you.
Yes, ma'am. Um, I was just wondering, um, do you guys have those cleanup days posted? Because I know with like the kids and community type stuff, I'd love to get a little league involved. Or Marlene normally organizes it. Well, we usually do it like once or twice a year. We'll have a project. We do need to um, paint the curves, um, the, the red and the blue and the green and stuff like that. We'll want um, another cleanup day before uh, Middle Ground Day. Mike, however, does have cleanup, ongoing cleanup. Right. right. I, I do these on the second Saturday, but I'm not doing it this month because I'm a little bit, I've got too much on my plate. But yeah, the second Saturday. Uh, from one to three, and I have their sticks and bags and routes that I like to sign. Or we can all just clean up anytime. Yeah, that's right. There so we go. We'll probably have another one before Middletown Days uh, to, to make sure that downtown is cleaned up. Any other public comment? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm Beth Rudiger, and one thing I wanted to tell you all about is the Middletown Luncheon Club. If you're not aware, the Middletown Luncheon Club has been in existence since 1929, so it's one of the longest meeting groups in the county. They have lunches um, once a month. It's on the third Wednesday, which is coming up next Wednesday. It's at the Senior Center right here. You get lunch for five bucks, and I, and I wonder if you can find any place in town where you can get a better lunch for five bucks. They do an awesome job over there. This, week's, or this month's speaker is Tom Nixon, who's with the Mocta Regional Trails. And he's going to talk about the, the trail system that um, he's developing in, along with the county and um, throughout the county, not just foot trails, but hiking and equestrian and paddling and all kinds of things. So if you're interested in coming, please make a reservation with the Senior Center or you can email info at, no, never mind. That's the other one. <laughs> you, can you, you can ask you me. Yes, yeah, you can send me to the Senior Center too. Also, which you can call the Senior Center. Center. That's really easy. I also want to let you know, I also run Lake County Jazzercise, and it's National Fitness Month in May, and we are doing free classes all month long. So if you want to try out a Jazzercise class, please come on down there 23 a week. And then the last thing I want to say is the Middletown Mercury is our local newspaper, which you all might not know about. It's an online newspaper, but that's one place that I saw the cleanup day listed every month. So that's Middletown Mercury <coughs> News. And it's, it's very similar to the Times Star. It has great community news going on in it, and it's a great place to find things out. So MiddletownMercury.news. All right. Thank you. Jimmy Cookoff, I forgot to mention, I've got a minute and a half of my three minutes left. So. We, got, we got 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Each year we have a chili cook-off, a contest, chili cook-off and salsa. And all, all the monies that are earned go to the senior center. Uh, we've given them over the last couple of years about 10000 bucks from the chili cook-off. Uh, the chili cook-off is fun to come to because we'll have music, there'll be, you can taste the chili, get tri-tip sandwiches, uh, there'll be silent auctions, and, uh, and it, it's just a fun deal to come to. The first place, first prize for the chili cook-off is a thousand dollars. First prize for the salsa is five hundred, and we take sponsorship. So if you're interested in sponsoring something, uh, please uh, contact me, and uh, we'll sign you up as a sponsor. But uh, if you want to enter, you have to do it right away. Yes, ma'am. Twentieth. Twentieth. Next week. Next week. Yeah. Next weekend. Next weekend. I beg your pardon? Are there applications in that? I'm sorry. Applications? Yes, we have them. Where? Senior Center. And Cal Folk. And the bank. And other places. Artists, too. Um, Lisa from Middletown Art Center and Eco Arts. And we always have cool things happening at the Art Center. You can find out what's going on on Facebook, on our website, middletownartcenter.org, and on the front of our building. Um, on the bulletin board. One thing that we have going on that's pretty much Facebook driven right now is uh, we're asking people, you know, what, what, what's happening around us in nature is extraordinary. The wildflowers, I know you all know it when you wake up in the morning and you look outside and every day it's different. And what we want to do is uh, we, want, we want people to take pictures, post them on our Facebook page called Wild Spring 
There's a Facebook page called Wild Spring. And just post your pictures there. And then we're going to choose three or four, and we're going to blow them up to six feet big, six feet wide, and put them on our building, like a mural of wildflowers that'll take us through the summer when everything dries up. So please participate. We want to see what you see. Thank you. Any further public comment? Okay, with that, I'll close that section. Yo, okay. Did I miss one? Yeah, I have a question oh. um, in regards to the meeting, I think it was last month, about the Dollar General. I was just wondering why Matt wasn't representing, representing our county or our town as far as when we all came here to vote several months ago and talked about the Dollar General and how we have over 550 signatures on change.org, letting uh, people uh, from our community state that they did not want to have the Dollar General. I realized that MAP has neglected their obligation to go to the county and let them know our discussion that we had here. So I was just wondering on, why. Hang on, I got this one. I was just wondering why nobody from the board here represented the voice because I noticed in your mission statement, maybe you could read it again, it states that you guys are supposed to be our voice for the community. Were you at the meeting, ma'am? I was actually at my grandmother's funeral. So I'm sorry about gone. that. However, at the Board of Supervisors meeting. I can't hear you. I said, however, at the Board of Supervisors meeting, the vote was told to the Board of Supervisors. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. By whom? Yeah. By me? You no. didn't stand up and say anything. Fletcher did. No, he didn't. Wait, wait, wait. Not at this Board of Supervisors. Steady, steady. Hey, hey, hey. Order up. In, in Listen, I'm, I'll go through this one time, and then I'm not going to talk about Dollar General yeah. ever again the rest nuts. of my life. <laughs> We have been talking about Dollar General for two and a half years. We have had two votes at this body to either support it or not support it. We have consistently voted to not support it, and those votes have been transmitted to both the Planning Commission and to the Board of Supervisors. In spite of that. Wait a minute. Don't no, there's don't. people here who say that didn't happen. Well, you just don't know what the hell you're talking yeah, that's about. Well, you the people who were there then, right? Don't tell me I'm the one that hey, made hey, the hey, report. Hey, 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 hang on. No, shut Somebody up. Somebody right behind you was shaking their head. No, no, I don't care. What do you mean? I was not at the last word. Your integrity has been called into question. You should Your integrity has been called into question. Well, either you represent this group or not. I did not. You did not. You know why I did not at the last meeting? Nobody represents math without this body saying, we want you to go and represent us. And they did not do that. Isn't they, that part of the mission statement that you're supposed no, to do? No, no. Nobody can go and represent math without approval of this of this body. Doesn't that's the first your, time that you were approved to do that very well? Say again? You're the chair, right? No. Yeah. So sorry, you Claudis. don't know what you're talking about. Claudis, Claudis, so Claude should have done it. Doesn't doesn't the fact that we authorized it the first time when we had votes carry through? I mean, let's be real. This has been two two plus years going through a fire, being having this Dollar General pushed at us and people who have come to the meetings here believe that they would be represented at the meetings of the Board of Supervisors on both occasions. And yes, thank you very much. You did it at one, and you did it at the first planning commission. However, this lasted two and a half years, as you said. I think that it's more like two. And, and, and at the last Board of Supervisors meeting, which was very important, there was no voice of math. And the minutes, unfortunately, were in a pile this big of papers, and they did not make a difference. And the voice of the people of this body was not appropriately represented. And even though I mentioned the petitions and I mentioned that we had voted several times, it was not, I was not coming on behalf of math, I was coming on behalf of myself. However, it is understood on the, um, uh, in this body, and it was authorized that first time, that somebody would speak on behalf of all of us, and that never happened, and that's a shame. The because because the people who Wait. come to the meetings here <laughs> believe that they will be represented. Lisa, we've had two votes here. 
I think there were three. No, there's two. Two official and two, one that was kind well, of everybody raised their Don't hand. Don't argue. Let me make my statement. I didn't interrupt you. Okay. There's been two votes here. And both times I have gone before the boards and and specifically said, this is the exact vote. This many for, this many against. Twice. Twice. Okay? Twice. Not once. Twice. And it still was passed. No, it wasn't. Well, it was passed. It was, is it passed now? It is now, it is but it was now. denied. The, it was denied by planning, passed by the Board of Supervisors. You were both of those, and it was denied again. I was not again. both of those. No. I was not at both of those. You were at the first planning I and was at the not, first Board of Supervisors. Yes, but not the last two. No, okay. I was talking about the first two. Then it came back, and it went back to the planning. Nobody was there from math, although I was there representing myself. Nobody was there for math, and then it went, and it was denied by planning, and it went back to the Board of Supervisors, and nobody was there representing the voice of the people of math. Look, is that true or is that not true? Yes, true. The, the point is that nobody can go and represent math. The chair can. The cannot. chair can, hang and on. was authorized okay. the first time to carry our vote forward. Hang on. Ultimately, I'm so ultimately, you all have a it's voice. You all have a voice. Don't shop there if you don't like it. Period. Oh, please. Oh, please. Ma'am. Well, don't be our chair if you can't represent us. Hang on. You got a piece of property. Take off the name. The piece of property was authorized to do anything. It doesn't matter whether it's Dollar General Trader Joe's, whatever. It could have gone in there. Period. It's not about property, it's about the Middletown area plan. And it's about the voice it, of the plan. Again, community. again, it is the plan. The plan says it's zoned for commercial but highway use. But it says use. to discourage to the box stores well, and franchises. Discourage. You've done a wonderful why, job well, of discouraging. Why are we going through this again? I don't because know. Because the people it's, of math really wanted to passed. be represented and believe that they would have been represented. It's because been that's passed. what this body is for. Go this ahead. body is supposed to be an advisory body. Well, to let, don't lecture. Don't lecture. I'm not. Hey, yes, you are. No. Oh, hey, county oh, super, oh, county oh. supervisor was here at the meeting. Yeah, yeah he was there. Yeah. Yeah. But, the, but, it, but, it, but, but there were five our... votes, not just votes. Well, and yeah, those okay, other people needed to hear from math. That's the purpose. They heard from math. They were well aware. They didn't. Two of the two of the supervisors are new, and they did not. Although Mo comes here and he heard, Tina did not hear from the people here. Tina he never heard from us. He was here. I'm talking yes, about the current yes, one. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Uh, this is Joan Clay. I was at that meeting, and I know truly that uh, a lot of people that were at that meeting have not been to the Board of Supervisors before. But I would have to say, Matt, who was there, even though presenting their own without a representative, you were not prepared. It was to me, disrespectful to the supervisors, and it was not a vote yes or no, it was a vote only for the design. When Jim Comstock was the supervisor, he passed that. That was only a design. Could Moke have sent it back to the planning? Yes, he could have. But I've heard Monica Rosenthal, his uh, opponent, say, get over it, people, that part's done. So anyway, I was there, and I would have to say that um, now you said at the meeting there were 800 signatures. Tonight I heard 350. Well, I was never asked to sign anything. I but I've been more. in a public place where people have said, I don't object to it at all, but I can't take the risk of telling people that I think it's fine if it comes. So I don't consider it unanimous. I personally have no opinion either way. But I would say, being at that meeting, I, I felt sorry for Middletown, and some of it I know people don't know. But it was fairly uh, attended. It did not compare to the Riviera. I, I would like to say that the process, I went to almost every meeting, and the process was long and arduous, and it was discouraging, and it was difficult. And that the points that were raised were raised many times over and over from this angle and that angle and this angle and that angle. And we appeared before in at least four or five meetings because there were a couple with the planning commission. And that and that it was it was noted that there that there was a lack of I'm not even gonna say this because in the end it comes down to he said, she said. But what definitely is true 
is that this body is supposed to represent the people of Middletown. And so at least somebody should have been appointed. And if it's our fault, that is to say the body's fault, that we didn't say, and Claude, please go and give them our voice at the next meeting, then perhaps that's our mea culpa. However, at the same time, I think that people, we would learn from this experience then that we must designate that because I think that everybody assumed that there would be a voice of Matt there because they have taken the time to come here and voice their opinion. And this is an advisory committee to the Board of Supervisors. So having said that, I hope that we can do better next time. Good deal. Okay, the next one is Michael. I'd like to table this to next month. Yeah. Table, table, table. 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 Uh, the Facebook. The no Facebook, discussion. okay. No discussion. Okay. So no, June, we please. Please. Oh, yeah. Do I have a motion to table this motion? I move the, the, the Facebook uh, agenda item be tabled to June. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Okay. Table. <laughs> Valley Fire. Memorial. Memorial. Oh. Mike Tabaki. Mm -hmm. um, so in January, this body approved that a committee be established to look into developing a Valley Fire Memorial. And following that decision, I've been thinking of the sequence of decisions that needed to be made. What type of form the memorial would take, uh, the location, and of course, how we're going to pay for it. And I was thinking in terms of, of that sequence form, location, and then paying for it. But I since uh, listened to Lisa, who is an artist, and she's saying that the location is uh, probably needs to come first. And I'd like to yield to Lisa. Could you speak more about why location through the perspective of an artist that we need to look at that before developing a form? Can you do that? Well, it's like architecture. I mean, you have to know where you're building before you build. Okay. You know, you can't just like stick a house anywhere. You have to know where it's going so it can relate to the space that it's going to be in. What about timing? Are we jumping? No, I think that I think that if this body can come up with uh, you know some options and then make some determinations about those options. However, you know, having having you know considering the fact that we started with Lars talking about the Trailside Park today and that one of the proposed places is the Trailside Park. It would probably behoove us to have that be part of our conversation when we form a committee to discuss the Trailside Park if we want to have the monument there, if we prefer to have it in town, and then what, what, what are the options in town that we could have it in. So I think that, uh, and, and do, are we going to do more than one, and how, you know, how are we going to pay for it and all of that, that's a, that's a whole another ball of wax that we need, to, it's the same thing, we need to put our heads together about the Trailside Park, I think and then move forward from there and hopefully we'll do that soon because you know Lars has mentioned that there's other committees that are going to be discussing it and we want to have our voices represented in that conversation so um, you know personally I prefer to see it in Middletown proper so the question is where are the locations in Middletown that are possible um, and one of them was a little triangle near the shopping center over there so I don't, I don't know who we talked to about that, and that's a question to the other members of this body. Um, but, um, but, but I think that we need to look at the different options. But it is very important for us to know where it's going to be so that we can then look at designs that then refer to that space where it is. It's, it's different. Different places would, 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 would give the artist a different reason and thought process of where they're going to, how they're going to build things and what they want to make it out of and what the content is, okay. is going to be. Thank you. So what's your, we want to take it from here. You guys are going to come back. Open up to open any questions. Any, uh, any comments, thoughts? Any thoughts? No? Well, <coughs> yes, it's fine to look at. I have, a, yeah, it's, I got it's an email from uh, uh, Gary, Greg, for uh, regarding the fire memorial and a couple little uh, things that uh, might be appropriate for a uh, some kind of a memorial to the fire firemen. So if you want to look at these, I'll have them up here. It's a statue of a 
a little fiber with a ladder and a hose and all that. So come up, take a look at that. I think I think it would behoove us to be looking at a whole bunch of proposals at the same time I'll rather than well. making a determination. Okay, so oh, yes, we'll take that back. Yes, we won't let you look I, at I this today. Just put in there that I think my opinion would be to have it in town where people driving through could notice it and say, oh, you know, maybe they don't know anything about the fire. Maybe they could have something that says, you know, a little bit about the fire and how many homes and that kind of thing. I think that would be <coughs> what I would like to see. Yeah. It's, it's quite obvious. We have to pick a location or somebody has to come up with some location. Yes, ma'am. Well, we have a beautiful park here and we also have our own museum right across the street. Right? Okay. Well, no further discussion. We'll close that and look for Michael to come back at some other day. I think, I, I think, if I might, just I think that where I'm left with this is like, who do we ask about these places? So we can ask the Gibson Museum about Gibson. Who do we ask about the park here? The county. The county. The county. Well, I'm both. But I think the county and the triangle. And then I think what, because I asked Lars about this at one point, he points. At, he said you need to ask your community where they want to put it. Right. You know, so at some point we're going to have to have a conversation with options where we tell, and, and of course when the time comes, then we'll have proposals that this body can vote on of what it might look like. You know? right. Remember, I just want to say information, nothing is going to happen until someone makes a motion, put it on the agenda as an action item. There will be no committees, there will be nothing done until somebody the put has already been formed. Anyhow, so for for where it's going to be, I think we need to have a discussion. We need a motion to bring it before the body so they can discuss it and make a decision. It's on the agenda today. Yeah, it's under action. Yeah. So, I'll ask this question. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm going for. Do you have a location pick that you want to submit to the it's on the agenda. Let's vote on it. No, there's nothing to vote on. That's why I, that's what I told Michael. Michael put this on the agenda, and I said we're not ready yet. But we okay. still, nonetheless, want to keep the people informed okay. about what's going date. on. And I really appreciate your input, by the way, yeah. and Karen's as well. We do. At a later date, Michael will request to come back and present some locations. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you. The next one, math projects. And we have a, we've had a few listed. Marlene's been kind of heading that project up a little bit. You want to say something? Um, I, I'm happy to. I've always, I've always got projects that I want to do. <laughs> um, I, I would like for us to um, definitely concentrate on the trailside park before that gets away from us. But I would also like to um, paint the curbs and um, I've already talked to somebody about talking to the county about um, some kind of solar um, field for um, Middletown. That's a great idea. And um, so I'm kind of waiting to hear more on that. Solar field? Yeah, like a, like a solar plant. Okay. Solar farm. Yeah, solar farm, okay. whatever you want to call it, that would make solar power for um, our community. And I was thinking, since they're going to be doing a lot of work out at the sewer ponds, upgrading those and all of that for the reconstruction, that that would be a good place to go ahead and plan in a solar field for it. Especially since there's one you've already in that neck of the woods. Right. But this would be That's bigger big. and, and supporting the community. How would we do that, though? Yeah. Okay. Any other? Projects we want to talk about. Can I vote that we give Claude a microphone? She is very <laughs> um, difficult to hear. I, was, I didn't realize the meeting was going to be this. <laughs> I'll try to do better. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> Any other projects you want to be discussed tonight? Uh, this is not a project, but this is just information. I have uh, drawings of the new oil change center, store 24, if you'd like to take a look at it. These are the new drawings have been, I guess they've been approved now, so. Okay. Um, back, to look at, that's it. back to the projects. Any 
besides the solar field and painting the curves. Yes, ma'am? I, I would also like to see some arches put up on the, at, at the park um, on both entrances on Highway 29 or Calistoga Road or whatever. This one? Yes. Which we're working on, aren't we? We are. We're there trying. We we're working on it. All right. Arches that go across or to the park? Like, well, like to the over park. the walkways where you come in. Just like where the chili cook off signs are now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but permanent, not temporary. And, and they would represent the, the vital people that were involved in building of the park and that. Right. It, we could, we could uh, put a plaque on them that has everyone listed that was involved in the park. Okay. So, what's your desire on this point, on adopting math projects? Um, whatever anyone else wants to work on. All of the above, none of the above, some of the above. <laughs> well, hearing, hearing Isn't that funny? Nobody wants to work on a project. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I can't even get him to come and pull a weed. Yeah. I want to work on the solar thing. Okay. But I don't think that it's a. It's for the math board. I think that it's a completely different it's enterprise. Individual thing. Absolutely. Okay. So with that. So we're down to the curves then. Well, you got the paint of the curves, and that's <laughs> and the arches. That's before we got to do that before. Middletown days, which is June. Well, I don't know if we have to do it before Middletown days because we have to get a permit from Caltrans. Yeah. So, okay. and that might take a little while. No. Yeah, that hasn't taken too long. I'll call Mike. It probably takes me longer to get the paint out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it takes longer because I have to drive up and get it. <laughs> so, if we can get a permit and then let the schools know, okay, and have the kids come out and help us paint curbs. Okay. And we need to get paint. I'll uh, call Clyde we'll do that. I'll call yeah. Clyde Bonnell. He's in charge of permits for Caltrans. So and he can give us a verbal okay. We'll, we'll get something going and get back and, and make some announcements somehow. Okay. With that, I'll close that part. Agenda items. Now, hang on. One quick thing. We do have a <coughs> special guest next month. Uh, assembly member. Angela but Curry. We did have her. Uh oh, we did. They, she has requested that we reschedule. Okay. To July 14th. Okay. Does anybody have a calendar on yeah. them? Yeah. yeah. Look at the what, what that date falls on. Yeah. July 14th. July 14th. Okay. Assembly member Dodd came here to That's meet a with Friday. us. Yeah. Friday. We had to reschedule. The legislature uh, has is in session on Thursdays. She wants to come here on Friday the 14th, and we did that for Senator Member Dodd, and I can submit a motion that we reschedule July, if it pleases the body. Otherwise, she's not going to be here. That's Friday. Right. Yeah, they'll be scheduled on Friday. Huh? They'll be scheduled. <coughs> Friday night. Mm -hmm. Friday's only a good night. I'm not even in the state, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would you, maybe we move to the fall or something like that? Yeah, I can get with her schedule and find out if there's a, a window where they're in recess. Yeah. She can get here on a Thursday. What was she coming here for? What is the Just to address, she was part, part of the community, wanted to address and bring up a few items that she's been working on at the state level for, for Lake County and that. Uh, I think there's Mike knows of what the lake. Right, the Blue Ribbon Committee to um, restore or rehabilitate Clear Lake. She has uh, proposed legislation. To, to uh, the Blue Ribbon Committee. <laughs> to do a study. <coughs> to do a study. Another study. Um, she could probably give us an update on the cannabis, update on the cannabis implement, implementation. Uh, what well, else? At the, she, at the state level. Oh, at the state level. Yeah. And then, and then answer your questions, too, to, to, of anything you had. So. Yeah, we, so we, we give her five minutes for an opening statement, and then we open it up, and it's a give and take question. Q and A, and then she has a closing statement. Okay, so That's we'll the way it normally goes. see see when she has a recess, and if she can start. Sure. Right. Okay. Anything else somebody would like to put on the agenda for next month? My day is chili cook-off. Twentieth. Twentieth of this month. Next week. Where where next do vendors? Week. How do vendors 
Get the senior center. Contact Lori at the senior, senior center. center. And how do people sign up for committees or to be involved at the Trailside Park conversation? Trailside Park conversation. Let's start with that. Trailside. Okay. Are there people here who didn't give Clive their email who wants to be part of the, uh, not Clive, but Lars, that want to be part of the conversation about Trailside Park? So, so we need your email. Yeah. 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 He also said that he wanted emails. So if people didn't give him the emails, and if you give them to me, I'll get them to him. Rem remember, if we don't have a committee from here, the county will make the decisions about Trailside Park. Yeah, it, without us, it behooves us to to sit to, to find some time to sit together and make some plans. Please, could you only do um, I'll be on the committee. Okay. Okay, so as far as that goes, if you want to be on the committee, then come here and write write down your name so that we can track that, please. Okay, with that, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Goodbye. See you all later. Thanks for coming. Fletcher.